Oh, you want me to start now? Okay. All right. Okay. So we ready? Hi. My name is Katherine uh, Williams. I come from a family of incest. I come from um, a family of total dysfunction. Everything I believed to be true, I found out later was wrong. So I graduated um, in October 2017 with my bachelor's of science and human service management from University of Phoenix. And I wanna say that that was the beginning of me really believing, starting to believe in myself. And I'm 45 years old, and I'm originally from Allentown, Pennsylvania, Lehigh County area. Um, so I got to Williamsport by way of Muncie State Prison. I was raised in uh, the projects, so when I looked out my window, I seen pimps, prostitutes, and drug users. Um, and so I was always teased at home for being dark-skinned and... Um, I'm also the child of an alcoholic mother, so I didn't, uh, I never really felt any love at home. So I left when I ventured out um, at the age of 12 years old. I was looking for something and some place to belong. Um, I uh, came upon a guy uh, who was older. He always had a lot of girls around him, you know, and to me that was, it was intriguing <laughs> um, also because he was paying me attention, a little bit of attention. And so um, I didn't know it then, but he uh, was a pimp. And so um, since I was always in search of a family, um, I ended up joining that family. And um, there was a, a woman who was, um, he had a couple women, but there was one who was, um, she kind of brought me in and mothered me and nurtured me and, you know, showed me the attention that I wasn't receiving at home. Um, he ended up taking me all over the world, myself and two of the other girls. Um, we stayed at different hotels. It wasn't difficult for me to turn my first trick. Family does things for family, so it didn't, it didn't seem like it was wrong to me. Um, and so I turned my first trick at the age of 12 years old. I just wanted to make them happy. I wanted to be a part of something and someone. There was always an exchange for sex. It was always sex with older white men. Um, there was always a, a, finance, a monetary exchange. And so um, I went to this party one night at the age of 17 and um, I was in Massachusetts at the waterfront. I'll never forget it. And I seen this guy and he was, he was a young guy. He was, I was 17. So, and he was young, he was really nice looking. And so I thought, wow, I want to have sex with him. <laughs> you know, um, to me that was different because I had never had sex with someone because I wanted to have sex with him. It was always, it was always in exchange for something. So I ended up having sex with this guy and, um, I ended up getting pregnant, you know, and so needless to say, um, pregnant on the road with a pimp and two other wife-in-laws, I was no longer beneficial to the family. So they kicked me out. Um, he put me on a bus and sent me back to Pennsylvania. And I remember leaving feeling um, just really empty and lost, not knowing... Um, what I was going to do, uh, not even, just lost, no sense of direction. Um, and so when I came back to Allentown, I went back to, I went to, I sought out the community that I had just recently left, which was pimps and prostitutes. And it just so happened that at that time, um, uh, Free Basin had hit the scene. And so um, I had, uh, I began indulging in, in, in drugs and um, I was pregnant and, and I was smoking coke and, and then eventually it changed to crack and, and so that's what my life consisted of and I had my first 
crack baby um, in 1991. This went on from, from, from 91 until uh, 2001. Um, I had seven crack babies. When I wasn't using the drugs, it was like I would think about, I would be reminded of those feelings of, you know, what I did when I was smoking crack pregnant. I was in jail and I had to go face those charges and so I, I went in front of uh, Judge Carol K. McGinley, I'll never forget it, and she looked at me and she said, and I was standing before her, I was like six months pregnant, and she said, Miss Williams, I am disgusted with you. She said, this courtroom is disgusted with you. Mm. She said, you are a social parasite and you pollute our community with your crack babies. And she said, and she said, um, we're gonna do something so that everybody can be happy, you know? Um, and she said, and you're standing in front of me now pregnant, you know? And so at that time she, uh, she rescinded the sentence that I had originally and she sent me to Muncie State Prison. I, I was scared, I was petrified, I, I, I didn't know what to expect. I was so clueless, I was so clueless. Um, Cause all I had was the child in my womb. I, I was leaving my other babies behind and so I went to Muncie and um, I was supposed to do their drug and alcohol program there called Wings of Life. And when I got there, um, I wanted to get involved in everything else, you know. Um, I just didn't know who I was. Um, and uh, so I got there and I got involved in same-sex relationships and it was just crazy. You know, Muncie was like a world inside of a world. Eventually, um, I came up for parole um, and I ended up going, um, I remember telling the, the parole board um, that I, I wanted to go back to, I didn't want to go back to Allentown because there was nothing there for me. And so um, they let me go to uh, TLC. <laughs> wow. And so I went to TLC in 2003. Um, and that was, I didn't even know what to expect going there. I was, whew, I was just so, you know, I, only thing I knew was the tools that I had up to this point. It, to me, it seemed like I was going to another city, you know? It, 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 it was the same game, it was just gonna be different, you know what I mean? Just in a different town. And so that same mentality that I had, that I took with me all over the world as a prostitute, was the same mentality I brought here, brought with me to TLC. And TLC wanted me to get my own place, and I was like, I don't wanna do that. So, you know what I did? I found myself a sugar mama. <laughs> Um, and yeah, I got a sugar mama and I ended up moving in with her and, uh, me and my son went there and we stayed and it, it was, it was okay, but it wasn't, um, that was just another phase. I was really looking at it as security. It was supposed to be a step up, but it ended up being a step down when I look at it because, um, my behaviors were still crazy. I was still, you know, I was just using that person, um, not that I wanted to, but that's really all I knew. You know, it was about surviving. And so as a direct result of that mentality, as a direct result of um, still uh, turning tricks in this area, um, I ended up relapsing again after seven years. You know, the, the, my way of thinking became more violent and just my, my way of whatever, I was more than willing to do whatever, even more. And so um, I ended up, meeting a lady and um you know we came up with this plan to rob this man wow and uh nobody was supposed to get hurt nobody was supposed to get hurt <laughs> because that's not even who i am i'm not that's not i i don't uh, uh. And so I was keeping the, the guy busy. I was keeping the, the trick busy. And uh, 
Oh, I was keeping busy, and the two guys came in with the face masks, and um, they were. It was supposed to be an exchange of marijuana for for crack. We were going to trade it on the streets, and uh, they came in with this pipe, and they, and they started beating the man and his dog. <laughs> And I remember thinking, when this was happening, I remember thinking like it felt like I was, it felt like a, 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 a like a, a movie, because I just didn't believe that it was real, you know. And uh, and so um, I ended up after that we ended up leaving and. Nobody, nobody ever got anything. They didn't get the marijuana, and I didn't get the money, and so it was kind of like it was, it was, it was horrible. It was um, very violent. Very. Uh, it was also scary because now I'm looking at the people that I've chosen to be around, and that's not even that's not who I am. I'm not. I'm not that. I'm not that kind of person. I don't. I don't have that kind of heart, you know. And so, oh, um. <laughs> And so I have my son with me, and uh, I, by this time I'm in full fledged addiction. And so I call uh, the lady Harriet Dalton again from the Prison Life Ministries, and I say, "Listen, I can't take my, I can't keep my son. I say you got to come get him. You've got to place him somewhere because I can't do it because I'm using and and I'm about to be on the run." So. Um, she came and got my son again and he, you know he just you know he just couldn't understand and I remember telling him that 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 I was coming back you know and I remember him saying to me like well why am I taking all my clothes you're taking everything out of the drawer why am I taking all my clothes <laughs> And I remember saying, well, because when I come back to get you, we're going into a, a whole nother house, you know? And there have been plenty of times like that with him where, you know, like I can remember specifically one Christmas um, I was using and, and we didn't have a Christmas tree. We didn't have anything up. And I remember telling him that um, Christmas was that, that the day, because he heard his friends at school talking about Christmas. And I remember telling him that, that they were lying. Christmas was, it wasn't coming up. You know, and that was, you know, because of me trying to, you know, negate or forget what what time of the year it was, you know. But um, and so I ended up going on the run and I went on the run to uh, Mississippi, Louisiana, and it was it just became it, it was even more horrible. Um, for a moment, I actually thought that I could try to get my life together being on the run. I got a job at a casino and, you know, I did what I knew. You know, I I was trying to find tricks at the casino, you know, and uh, yeah, it was crazy. And so eventually I found the drugs there and it, it was, that was nuts. And so I ended up getting pulled over by the, getting stopped by the police because I was trying to do a transaction for a guy and the next thing I know I end up um, I'm down in, in New Orleans at the police station and while I'm there uh, they run, ran my fingerprints and they said you're wanted <laughs> you're wanted in a little town called Snyder County and Union, Union County in, in, in Pennsylvania and we're gonna extradite you and so they extradited me back and um, the past that I was running from, I was now on my way back to face. And I went back to Muncie. <laughs> um, and while I was at Muncie this time, it was kind of like I was really, I was more focused on doing what I needed to do to get out because I had had a taste of life. So I knew that life really did exist as I 
had seen it on TV because I had, and as I had seen it, other other people around me, my my community was no, no longer pimps and prostitutes and drug users. My community was now that I had seen recovering addicts, um, people who were working, going to work every day. You know, I had I had been exposed to that, and so I I wanted that. I just didn't think that. I could get that. I didn't think it was possible for me, you know. And so um, I, I ended up going back again to TLC. And um, once again, TLC was kind of like, that was like my second home. It was, it was such a place of safety. I mean, I can't, I, I can't forget, like, you're talking about someone who just didn't know. Like, I, there was so much that I didn't know. I, there was, you know. I mean, you know, you, what's normal anymore, but when you come from a home where every family has some dysfunction, but when you come from a home where you're, you're taught the basic things, like make your bed, you know, brush your teeth, uh, do your chores, do this, do that. And, and when, when you come from a home like that, and if, if you don't, you know what I mean? When you're then exposed to that, you know, and, and you find it in a place, in a, in a, in a residential facility. I mean, it's, I hate to say it, but that's kind of where I found that, that stability at. And so um, I went back to TLC and uh, it was a place of, it, like I said, it was like my second home. I felt safe. Um, I went back and, and got back into counseling and, you know, just did all those things I needed to do to get back on track. I went back into the 12 step meetings. Um, life is just so different today beyond my wildest dreams. My tears are not about sadness. Um, I need to say my tears are about how far I've come. You know, when I look back, I've, life has been rough based on the decisions that I made, you know, um, but I'm also, I'm grateful, you know, because um, I had to go through that. So um, the people, I, the person that continued to mentor me in my life was Chanel Johnson. Um, she just, She and I had developed this spiritual relationship, um, and it was like she just breathed life into me. And she became my mentor, and um, just encouraging me, and you know, and, I, and so I'm watching her, and as I'm watching her accomplish her goals, I'm thinking, maybe I can do it too, you know, maybe, just maybe I can do it too. And so the first goal I accomplished um, after watching her accomplish, she graduated college and I went to her graduation with her. So then I ended up feeling like I could graduate college. So I graduated um, in October 2017 with my bachelor's of science and human service management from University of Phoenix. And I want to say that that was the beginning of me really believing, starting to believe in myself and feeling like, you know... I can, if I put my mind to it, if I, you know, I can do this. And so one of the other things that has been really vital in my life has been my faith. My faith has, uh, people probably think I'm crazy, but I, you know, my faith has like kept me in moments of <sighs> despair. I'll say in moments of despair, um, and my relationship with Chanel, I have, my life is just so different today, you know, um, beyond what I could have ever imagined. I would have never thought that um, I would have graduated college and that I would be, um, my, be starting my own uh, entrepreneurship um, as a consultant. Um, I'm a, I was a grant writer, you know, I would never think I would never imagine my life as it is today. Um, and so when I look back now, um, I look back only to see how far I've come, you know, and I know that I've got so much more to go. Um, I'm excited about my future. I'm excited about um, the things that are happening in my life. I believe in me today. <laughs>
Um, whereas before, I couldn't say that, you know, and I'm just grateful. I'm so grateful. Um, coming to TLC um, really showed me like what what living is supposed to be like inside of a house. For instance, um, they taught me how to cook there. I never knew how to cook anything. It was it was soups, it was cakes, it was hug juices for me. Um, you know, that's what my life consisted of. Um, they taught me how to, you know, the daily hygiene stuff, just how to take care of myself, how to take care of my surroundings. But one of the things I, I noticed, and I was thinking about this the other day as I was looking back about the structure that was provided for me there um, and how um, if, I, if, they, if TLC hadn't have made me make connections with anybody outside of there, I would have stayed in that, in that mind of institutionalism, institutionalism. And I say that because I came from Muncie State Penitentiary where I, was, where I had a, a structure. When, when, it was, when the bell rang, I knew it was either child time. Um, when, when whatever bell rang, I knew what that meant. And so when I came to TLC, it was the same kind of structure, but they, they supported an environment for a safe environment for me to be able to come back to, even in going out to the community, which on a lot of days was scary for me, you know? So, um, yeah, TLC had become home.